Okay, Gregor, welcome to the channel. How are you doing? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Good to speak to you, sir. Good to speak to you too. Happy New Year. So for those of you that don't know, this is Gregor McGregor, and I expect that he is almost definitely Bristol City's number one sports journalist. Would you would you give yourself that tagline? I'm not sure I'd give that tagline, but I'm probably down here more than any other journalist. That's as far as I go. I think you're the one that everyone knows. I think when I see there's the, the Bristol City City Till I Die Facebook page, it seems that when you share the inside scoop on something, it's got slightly more credibility than when others seem to. You can, you can take the compliment without uh, necessarily signing up to it but I, I'd say this is Bristol City's number one sports journalist and I'm down here today a bit of a bonus episode on the channel today we just want to talk about Bristol City we've we've obviously just come out of the press conference this afternoon City are in a bit of a pickle just uh, you know I'm sure everyone watching this is well aware of what's going on but it's is it five losses in the last six games five losses in the last six games yeah or six in the last nine depends depends which way you want to look at it yeah so, so it's a pr pretty alarming pretty alarming slump in form um I suppose let's start with the most let's start with the most basic question and build from there. Johnson in or Johnson out? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, put you on the uh, there. <laughs> I think I think Johnson in at the moment for me personally. That's my my opinion. I, I do think he's got some time in the bank. I think if you look at the bigger picture, I was saying to you before, Seb, yeah. that basically. Every year for the last three, four years, he's seen year-on-year um, -year progression. At this moment in time, that's still very, very capable. We have to remember they're only, what, a couple of points, I think you said this, only a couple of points away from the playoffs. So it's very, very much within their hands, or, or wings, because they are the Robins, um, to, to finish in the top six. So, yeah, I, I think you've still got to back him, even though the current form is pretty dire. So as you're talking, I can almost hear the, the, the angry army of thousands of City fans, it does seem like there's a real backlash against Johnson in the minute. And I know this does seem to crop up each season for the last few years. I could be completely wrong, but to me at least, it feels a little bit different at the moment. It, feel <laughs> Yo! it feels at the moment, um, yeah, people really, really aren't happy. Um, do you think that their unhappiness is, 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 it, is it exaggerated? Is it hysterical? Or what would you say to people that are really passionately Johnson out, of, of which there are many at the moment? Well, first of all, let's make no bones about it. They're in dreadful form, as we've said. Five defeats in six is dire. It's It just seems to be falling apart at the wrong time in the season. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, some of the results have been dreadful. Obviously, 4-0 home loss to Brentford. There's no no escaping that. In terms of, like, the, the Johnson out kind of brigade, yeah, yeah we... I think for a long time there has been a maybe a, a, a sort of core of some supporters who haven't taken to Lee and his methods and, and don't believe or have only temporarily believed that he can get them to the Premier League. I think there's a number of reasons for that. One is, is the context, I've spoken on this a couple of times, the context of when he joined the club, following on from Steve Cottrell and Cottrell had his double winning side. A lot of people sort of see saw Lee Johnson at the time, rightly or wrongly, as a bit of a yes man in terms of someone who's going to come in and be a, a sort of a, a lackey, so to speak, for Steve Lansdowne. I don't think that is the case at all, but some people have perceived him as being just that. Then he had that um, dreadful run in his, in, his, in his first full season where he set a club record, eight defeats in a row. It's tough to basically come back from that. Fair play to Lee Johnson. He, he has done that. And I just think he's never really completely won everybody over because of those initial tough times. There's, as I say, a, a core of, of fans who... who just really haven't got behind him and also this stems a little bit back to his playing days when maybe some some people didn't rate him as a player and saw him coming into the club as just sort of well nepotistic really uh, following on from his dad being here and maybe not qualified for the job he hadn't really done anything at championship level obviously before he came to Ashton Gate so yeah they, they just see it as an easy appointment from Steve Lansdowne a cheap appointment and and they don't believe he's the right man but that I don't think is only like think, a minority I, I think only a minority was, if there were naysayers at the start I think it's fair to say that he's, he must have proved a lot of people wrong of course I, I think you mentioned before that City have improved their league position each season of the last three seasons and I think that's the only club in the league that can say that. That being said, uh, the response to, to this point um, about uh, Lee Johnson obviously doing extremely well thus far, the response would be that he, he's taken the club as far as he can take them. And I think that's how a lot of people are feeling at the moment, that, that he's not going to be able to take City past this level that, that he's got them to. And I'm not even necessar necessarily saying that's what I think. Mm -hmm. As I said to you before, I, I'm really, I don't like the hire and fire mentality. Uh, I like to give managers time um, and I don't like to, to call for managers' heads, but I think that is the response from people that, that 
the the logic behind getting rid of him at this point, um, whether it be mid season or at the end of the year, would be to find someone that can guarantee that promotion, that can can increase the chance of dominating dominating the league more than City have done. Do do you think there's any truth to that argument? Well, we're in a results business, to use the cliche. I mean, we've just been speaking to Jamie McAllister there, haven't we, in the press conference, and he's trotted out that every manager is under pressure. They are. They all need to get results. If you go through a bad run, you've, you've seen it with everyone from Jose Mourinho to Mauricio Pochettino. Anyone is is under pressure if they don't get wins and there's no escaping from the fact that it's five defeats in the last six. I know from reporting on Lee Johnson now for coming up to three years and from being down here more than anyone else, I know he'll be burning with the yeah. desire basically to turn that around. Yeah. He's he's a very gritty, resolute individual. That's yeah. one thing I've, I've learned about him. Do I think he's under pressure? Yes. Is it right to start talking about whether this is the end for Lee Johnson, no, but I would caveat that by saying that I've actually been writing something today that talks about whether this is the beginning of the end, if you know, if you kind of know what I mean. Lee Johnson is, I think, the seventh longest uh, serving manager in the football leagues at the moment. That's, 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 that's incredible, isn't it? Yeah, so, I mean, what's, it's coming up to four years in February. So it is right to start asking the question. The other thing is there's a bit of a backdrop here to not just results. There's a, a few reports the last few days about players wanting to leave. Um, there's talking about the transfers coming in and out and, and there's a bit of um, work to do on the squad. So, yeah, I, I think basically Bristol City fans are frustrated at the moment. And as is the case, the manager is going to carry the can. I wonder, something that I'm very interested in is you mentioned before that that often the dissatisfied people are the people shouting the loudest and making the most noise. I wonder what percentage, you know, you get 20, 20, 20 thousand. <laughs> you get, um, there's, I don't know if you could catch that on the camera, but there's a big gang of kids on bikes rolling past. But, um, you know, there's 20 plus thousand people in here each week. Um, it seems at the moment on social media that a sizable majority are part of the Johnson Out Brigade. I don't, I don't know whether they're just the, the, the loudest and, and to what percentage of the support really feel this way or or what percentage of the sport are of the more um, long-term minded approach. And uh, he's got credit in the bank, like you said, but I don't know how many people are part of the Johnson Out Brigade and, and whether or not it's yeah, louder I, than it seems. I would question those sort of proportions. I mean, we obviously keep an eye on uh, polls that go out on social media. Quite a few of the big Bristol City bloggers and, and fan accounts constantly run these kind of questions. We've done it ourselves. Do you think Lee Johnson is doing a good enough job? I, I do think that most supporters are realistic and see the bigger picture at the moment, see that he's had year and year improvement and they are not too far away from the playoffs. Just two, just two exactly. Points. All it takes is a couple of wins and they're right back in the picture. Yeah. So I really do think it's still too early to be talking about Lee Johnson leaving. The only thing, as I would say, is that if, if results continue to go south and in particular the Wigan game coming up, I know obviously Shrewsbury is the game this weekend in the FA Cup, he might ro rotate the team, so there might be a, a bit of an excuse, so to speak, mm -hmm. if they were to lose that one. But I think the Wigan away game is going to be very, very tough for him. Mm -hmm. It's uh, traditionally been the sort of match that Bristol City don't do very well in because you're coming up against a very well-organised and, and physical side, even though Wigan themselves are in terrible form. So... I think that could be a big match for Lee Johnson uh, and certainly the ones coming up after that. They've got some tough fixtures to come and if the results continue to spiral in the way that they are doing, then I do think Lee is going to come under a lot of pressure. We've, he's got this time in the bank, but eventually the, the board is going to turn around and say, is there somebody out there who can, who can basically get us higher up in the league? So if City don't finish top six, do you think that that could be enough for them to make that decision? Well... At the beginning of the season, I s predicted they would finish in the top half. That's where they are at the moment. I think 11th as we talk. I, I think from the squad they've got, from the work of Lee Johnson, I think that's reasonable where they are. But as we've said, it's very, very close. I do think January is incredibly key. The players they get in, Lee Johnson has spoken about trimming the squad. He wants to get players out himself. He wants to reduce the squad numbers, make it easier to manage. Um, th there's a lot of speculation in the likes of Eddie and Ketia from Arsenal. Is he going to arrive? Um, the business they do, I think, could be key between um, for how they sorry perform between yeah. now and the end of the season. So this is a vital time, not just for Lee Johnson, but for Mark Ashton, the CEO, the whole club, really. If they get their recruitment right this month, I think they can can finish in the top six. I'm not going to say they will, mm. but can do. And yeah, I do expect them to improve the squad and to move up the league between now and May. There's a big clamouring for Big Chris. 
uh, big Chris Hewton to come in. How do you feel about that? Do you think he would be a good appointment for the club if, if they decided to go down that route? You have to be careful what you wish for. I'm not sure that Chris Hewton would be the best fit for this club. Um, he obviously did a very good job at the likes of Newcastle, Brighton. I rate Chris Hewton very highly, actually. And one little story I have is I was at his last match at Brighton um, that was at the Amex Arena when they got promoted, when they actually lost to Bristol City that game. Josh Brownhill scored the only goal ahead. Uh, and Chris Hewton in the press conference came round, shook everybody's hands after the after the press conference. I thought that was a nice little touch, nice indication of his man management mm. skills, actually. Got a lot of time for him, but I, I, I'm not sure that he would suit Ashton Gate and the limited budget he's got here. Is he the sort of man to develop and bring through young players? Not too sure about that. Cool. Yeah, so I, I think that's we're pretty much drawing to a close. It's been a good conversation. I suppose there's um, one more thing to look at, which is tomorrow's game. Uh, it's the FA Cup. Do you think? Do you think a little break from the league has come at a good time for City? We, um, you know, we asked that question to Jamie McAllister, and he said it, it's just another game. But I'd be interested to know the thoughts of the manager and the players at this point. Do you think they want to just get their teeth stuck into the league, or do you think the FA Cup is a bit of a respite from from all the pressure? Yeah, I do think this does come at a good time. Actually, get away from the league games. Uh, give some game time to some of the fringe players who haven't played as much as, as they would have liked. And yeah, I, I do expect them to win tomorrow. Should be all right against Shrewsbury Town, but we'll see. Yeah. Okay, hey, Gregor, thanks very much for talking to me. No worries. Cheers, and I hope, hope we get to have a chat like this again another time soon with those kids. Just Anytime. <laughs> thanks very much, mate. So yeah, um, so that's it. It was great to chat to Gregor. Great to, to have him on the show. And um, I'll be down at the, uh, the FA Cup fixture tomorrow, which is the 4th of January tomorrow. Um, I'll be around here talking to the fans, getting all of your opinions as well. So um, if anyone wants to catch up tomorrow, keep your eyes peeled. Cheers.